When you see this house, what's the first thought that goes through your mind? I know, it's how do you model something like that in Revit? And today I'm going to be answering that question as we're going to be modeling this house inside of Revit. Let's go. Now quickly, before we jump into Revit, I would just like to take a moment to ask you to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. If you're serious about learning Revit, that's definitely the best place to be with over 140 hours dedicated to all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here, as you can see, inside of Revit, I have played some images. So we have the floor plan, here we have the elevation, and also we have the site plan for this building. So let's get started. We're going to be modeling this as a in-place mass. So let's start from there. But before we can uh, start modeling the mass, we need to have some references in form of reference planes. So let's add those first. I'm just going to go here to the work plane panel and then select the ref plane tool. RP is the shortcut. Let's create one here in the beginning of this building. Then let's create another one here. And then here in the end, I'm just going to be stopping the building here just because I don't really care about the end of it. I'm interested in this kind of front end of the building. Also in the site plan, I want to mark this spot. So for that, let's go back to ref plane and then mark that one as well. Go down to level one. So here in level one, let's name these. So I'm just going to name this one uh, R1 and just continue from there naming all of them uh, so we can easily identify them. And also we want to add a couple of vertical ref planes uh, just to mark kind of the edges of this building. So I'm just going to place one here and one here, and we can just name those uh, V1 and V2. Okay, so now once we have the reference planes, uh, what we need to do next is go to mask in sight, turn on show mass, and let's go to mass in place. Now I'm just going to click OK, let's leave a name as mass one, then let's move to the south elevation and let's create this shape right away. So for this shape, we need to create a rectangle. So I'm just going to check on that. And then for the ref plane, luckily I have named them. So I can just go here to uh, ref one, our reference plane one, click OK. And this will be a rectangle. However, it's going to have a radius fillet at the edges. So let's make this 700 uh, millimeters and then hit enter. And now when I zoom in here, let's start off from the edge of this rectangle, just like that. OK, and then go up to yes, yeah, something like this. Click and as you can see, it's going to fillet those edges right away. Hit the escape key a couple of times, select that rectangle, go to create form and we're done. We can now go back to level one and then we can just extend that to the back of this house or at least what we decide to be the back. And then in the 3D view that looks like this. Then we can go back to the south elevation. Now let's create the second one. So for the second one, again, go to rectangle, go here to set work plane and then pick reference plane number two, click OK. Uh, now also make sure that the draw on work plane is selected. As soon as you have some existing geometry, Revit might recognize that as a reference plane if you have drawn face selected. So make sure just to have draw on work plane selected. And also don't forget to check on radius. We have the same value, click here. It's convenient to click and then let's end up here. Again, it's going to fill out those edges, hit the escape key a couple of times, select that shape, create form, and then go back to level one and just extend that towards the back, just like this. And then in the 3D view, we can see that looks like this. Uh, finally, for the top one, let's go back to south elevation here. We can go again with a rectangle, set work plane, and now let's pick R3. Click OK and also make sure to check on the radius value. And now let's create that rectangle. Let's see. So that's something like this. Yeah. And then I can go all the way to the bottom, just like that. Perfect. Hit the escape key a couple of times, select that, create form. And then in the site plan, in this case, we can just extend it towards the back. Perfect. Let's see. Let's go back to the 3D view. 
yeah there we go looks really good okay and now before we continue i've just here in level one i have realized as you can see here and uh, this is the front area and as you can see it's lifted only up to here only up to the entrance and then the rest of it it's going to flat uh, with the house so what i'm going to do in order to replicate that i'm just going to go here into my 3d so this is where we have our kind of our, our entire shape so i'm going to go here to set work plane and i'm going to pick this work plane and then essentially i'm going to create a shape up to there so let's just see here it actually makes sense perhaps to add a reference plane just here just to kind of mark that area perhaps up to here just like that okay so now when i go back to the 3d view i can go to set work plane set it to here and then let's create a void shape starting kind of from the bottom and then following something like this so now once we have this in place i can find the this should be the east elevation yeah okay so here's that reference plane that i have added and then on this side i can just select this line bring it back here make it go up to this roof and then at the bottom let's see this in wireframe okay and at the bottom it can go up to there so i think this should be it so if i go back to the 3d view yeah that looks correct so now when i select this shape go to create form pick the void form and then i can just cut into this whole part uh, now this might actually cut through everything and you definitely don't want that you can uh, set this to shaded so you can see yeah it's cutting through everything i only wanted to cut through this shape so then you can go to cut and then uncut geometry and then you just want to uncut this from that okay so now as you can see it's starting to look uh, a lot more like kind of what we're looking for and now i think we should have pretty much everything in order again it's not perfect uh, to the kind of to the original project but we're kind of getting there so what i'm going to do now is just hit finish mass and now it's time to apply the actual building materials to this. So let's go here to masking and sight. I'm going to pick the wall by face first. I'm going to be using a 300 millimeter wall. And then let's pick this. Then this side here, this side, this side. Same thing goes here, just like that. Here, here and then pretty much everywhere else where we need this which is just a couple more places and yeah that should be it okay moving forward let's now apply some roofs so let's go to roof and then all of this should be a roof all of this all of this and let's see do we have anything else so yeah i think this should be it so now we can just click on create roof and then finally for the floors floors work a little bit different so floor by face you need to uh, select the floors like levels in this case we just need floors here on the bottom so for that what i'm going to do is just kind of sketch those out so let's go here to architecture then i'm going to go to floor and then let's use pick lines so here let's pick this line this line, this line, and this one in the back. And then just use trim and extend to corner. TR is the shortcut and just fix all of that up and hit finish. Now, if it's not aligning perfectly and it probably won't, you go to south elevation and then you just move it into place. Obviously you would have to adjust the layer, the levels properly. In this case, I'm just gonna doing this quickly. So I'm not bothering with that. Then for the second floor, uh, that's going to be this one here. Again, use pick lines. So this will be here, 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 and then, yeah, we can pick that. And again, you just use trim and extend to trim the access. Then we just hit finish. We have that floor. Again, we need to go to south elevation and just adjust it. So select it, move, and then let's move it up to here just like that and finally we will just need to repeat the same process for creating the floor on the upper uh, shape and now we're done with floors now let's add some curtain walls so for that i'm going to go here to level one so for one curtain wall let's go here to wall and i'm going to use storefront 
let's place one here. So I'm just going to go side to side just like that, hit the escape key a couple of times, then find that curtain wall, go into edit profile, delete everything, and then you just use pick lines and pick the inner lines of all of the roofs and the floor and the walls and so on, you hit finish. So here you delete elements and now you're going to have that curtain wall there. Uh, we also want to repeat the same thing up here in this uh, upper shape. And finally here at the front, uh, if we just go back to level one, you can see here we have this garage and then there's a curtain wall here. So for that, let's create a wall. So a wall, I'm going to change it. So let's change it to something like this generic wall. I'm going to change the location line to finish face interior and go from here, just like that, flip it to the other side, go up to here and then go up to there, just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times and then let's switch to a curtain wall and place a curtain wall going from here to here. Okay, so once we have that in place, let's go to the 3D view. So for this wall, I can just attach top base to here. Uh, this one is going to be a bit more complicated. So let's go into edit profile. I can lower this just like that. Let's remove the constraints. I should be able to snap it here. Let's see. Okay, a bit higher, just like that. And then to fix this issue here, you just use big lines, you pick this line, hit the escape key a couple of times. Let's see, then this line should go up to there. Oops, just like that, remove constraints. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky until you get it to the right place. Yeah, and then let's repeat this. And then let's use trim and extend to corner just to fix everything up. So let's see here, it's not aligning. Oh, okay, so we need to just drop this down a little bit. There we go. So now this wall looks the way it should. And then finally for the curtain wall here, again, we can just drop it down. Let's see if we can adjust it here or just go into edit profile. It's going to make it a bit easier. Remove constraints, yeah. So sometimes it doesn't want to snap, which I find annoying. I can use back, uh, I can use all the align tool for that. And then finally here, let's just use the uh, pick lines for this and then trim and extend to corner to fix that joint and the same thing down here. So just use trim and extend to corner if it doesn't. Yeah, so let's see. There we go. So this line doesn't matter. Okay, trim and extend and just fix it up, hit finish, delete the elements, and there we go. So we have this house created. Uh, we can extend this wall a little bit to the front just to kind of remove the part of the, of the, of the car from here where the entrance for the people will be. And then we can even add a door there. Perhaps, yeah, this is the largest door we have, that's okay. So you add a door there and there we go. So this already looks really, really good. Finally, I just want to show you how you can add the filleted edges here on this wall. So this is actually really simple. What you want to do is you just want to go to component, model in place. This can be just a simple generic model. Click OK. Then you want to use a void, but a swept void. So void sweep, then go to pick path. And then you can just pick the outside here just like that. Now I'm going to change the profile just a little bit from what I've seen in the actual house, just because I, I have the preferences of my own. So anyways, you go here to edit the profile. So let's go something like this. Use pick lines to pick the top and the bottom, just so you can see kind of what you're doing. Okay, and then I'm going to use trim and extend to corner. Yeah, just like that. Then switch to fillet edge and then fillet that like this. And here I'm going to add a fillet like this. And then you add a simple line here, just like that. You use trim and extend and then you just kind of fix it or inverse this to create this shape. Hit finish, finish again. Now we have that 
shape. Now you go to cut geometry and you basically use a multiple cut and then you're pretty much cutting everything here with that. So we need to cut, oops, these. Let's try that again. There we go, hit finish. And now, as you can see, we have that cut and this looks a lot nicer. And then finally, we can go back to Masking Insight, turn off Show Mass, and the whole thing is going to look even better. And there we go. That's kind of a quick gameplay tutorial on how to create a building that looks like this. Uh, if you want to get access to this Revit project file, as well as all of my other Revit project files, you can find that on my Patreon page, which I'm going to link to up in the cards above, and then also down in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe uh, for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.